Hello, hello, and welcome. I am so excited to have everyone here today. I am Diane Smokorowski. I am a Skype master teacher. I've been using Skype in the classroom. Oh, it seems forever, but I just absolutely love it. And with me is the amazing Shannon McClintock Miller. Hey, Shannon. Hi, it's so good to be here with you today. I am so jazzed to have you here with us because it is a great day. As you know, every day is a great day, but today is an especially great day to talk about the love of literature and reading, no matter where kids are. Would you agree? Oh yeah, been thinking about that a lot lately. <laughs> well, I think uh, I think this is a great opportunity for a conversation, don't you? Oh yeah, I would. My favorite thing to talk about books surrounded by books in the back and yes and all the things that we do i can't wait well i want to welcome everyone from uh, our audience who's joining us today as well and if you have just a couple of moments friends in the chat if you'll be so kind to tell us where you are dialing in from your geography and as well as what is it that you teach and if you're reading a book right now, I'd love to know about that as well. So go ahead and put that in the chat. And Shannon, I'm going to have you introduce yourself a little bit more about who you are. Yeah, thank you. Um, my name is Shannon McClintock Miller. I am the district teacher librarian and also the director of innovation of instructional technology and library media. That's a mouthful at Van Meter Community School in Van Meter, Iowa. So we are a small town in Iowa right outside of Des Moines and we have it's kind of a unique situation because we have about 900 kids K-12 in our building and have done just tons and tons of things with um, Skype and connecting with other classrooms and authors and illustrators and all kinds of people throughout the year. And it's just been so neat just to see how even the last few months, how our kids continue to connect. And so we're super thankful for everything that Skype has provided us. And I also serve as the Future Ready Librarian spokesperson, um, working with the Alliance of Excellent Education and librarians all around the country. And so I'm super excited to be here with you today. Oh, what we're going to talk about today is going to align nicely with the Future Ready Librarian standards. Yeah. And one of my favorites off that list is how the library should be the heartbeat of a school. And even though your school may be in one physical location and your children are in many, that doesn't mean that heartbeat stops in one building. It just has ripple effects to children all over. And so with that in mind, what, how would you define that heartbeat? What does that mean? Translate that a little bit more for us. Well, I think that how we have grown our library within our school and just, you know, seeing what others have done to around the world is something that we can connect our kids, you know, not only to great books and learning experiences, but also the experiences that we can bring them using technology, using connections that we can make, um, connecting them when we think about our students like social emotional health and things that we can bring them. And when I walk through, you know, our building and just to see our kids, it's not only even that space that we have, it doesn't stay in the library. It is, you know, moving that like heart of the school, what a librarian can really bring and just kind of that glue that holds us all together. If it's, you know, connecting us to books, if it's connecting us to technology, to experiences, to innovative things that we do and creativity. And I think that I have the best job in the school because I get to do all of those things. But, you know, really having that person and just that place that kids can feel like they have those connections is something that is so special. Indeed. And you know, there's several teachers that are on this group right now who are from my own district, and we have been having a cohort about the Future Ready Librarians and really focusing on that idea of that heartbeat and how that is, trickles into other, other classrooms and things. Yeah. But I'm also curious, I'm going to ask the audience first, what is it that you love about a great book? Hmm. 
And I know, Shannon, you're already pulling some answers together. Mm -hmm. Audience, what do you think? What is it that you love about a great book? All right, Shannon, what's your answer? Well, the thing I love about a great book is I also am an artist, and so I love picture books, and I love beautifully illustrated books where the pictures tell the stories. Um, I also love books that are like historical in nature and also tell people's personal narrative. And of course, I love really funny books because I love reading aloud to kids. Um, over the last few months, I have read tons and tons of picture books, but also have read some too just for myself and again even as an adult i think the things that i love about great books are kind of the same you know stories about people and history and just all of the great things that happen around the world and so what do you love about a great book well i love the fact that it transports me from my little world in andover kansas to anywhere and that's what I also love about Skype in the Classroom, that these are parallel. I can go explore adventure in the jungles of, of India. I can go on a lobster boat out off the coast of Maine. I can go to Hawaii and listen to the sounds of the animals and maybe even smell the sulfuric scent that would come out of a volcano. I can be transformed anywhere. And that's that's what I love about a book. It, it just takes us on a real world adventure. And yeah. Jennifer in the chat has also just said the same. You know, getting swept away into a into a place and time is one of her favorite elements. Um, Heather is saying historical and imagining what it would have been like at that time to actually go back in time. And you kind of mentioned a little bit of that as well. Uh, Marina says great books, gorgeous illustrations, or illustrations that are so beautiful they connect to the text, they uh, provide a powerful combination with the words. A book just transforms you, would you say? Oh yeah, and that's the thing I think that we love about, you know, being able to share books with kids. And if it's not only our little ones, but I'm a firm believer in sharing picture books with older kids as well. And really, you know, being able to tie into the curriculum and what we do and just their interests and their passions think that we can hook readers for life that way. Indeed. And especially with so many things changing, or maybe not changing, but maybe a better word is it just expands, especially nonfiction, where we're seeing so many of these photograph-driven primary resources embedded into nonfiction with great call-outs. And it's, it's just making a curious mind go a little bit further. And I, I, I'm ex so excited with so many nonfiction updates that have happened. Oh, me too. Uh, okay, next question to the audience. What global connections, if any, have you had with your students around literacy? Hmm, maybe they've done author visits. You've done a few of those, Shannon. Just a few. <laughs> <laughs> what do you love about those experiences? Oh gosh, I we have been just so blessed to have so many great experiences with authors and illustrators and you know from the very beginning of when we started using Skype in the classroom like Skyping with authors like Mercer Mayer when he drew little critter for us to Mr. Forbes to Catherine Applegate like the list goes on and on and on and I think not only, you know, giving our kids these books and these experiences, but then having kids see who is behind the books and the illustrations really brings literacy to life for kids. Um, I also love the connections that they make, that they can see themselves maybe as authors and illustrators, which has been, you know, just so cool to be able to see that and those light bulbs go off. And another thing that we really love is being able to make connections again to other places, like to really take a glimpse into like what that author is thinking or what is the illustrator like, you know, what is their background experience? Where are they from? What do they have an interest in? And just those connections that our kids not only make during that Skype, 
but really feeling, you know, when they go to the shelf or they're in their classroom and picking up those books and remembering those connections that we made is something that I think our kids will remember forever. I know I will. And, <laughs> indeed. And my favorite question is, well, how long does it take you to write a book? Yeah. <laughs> the students ask that every time. And, you know, because I have to write a paper or a paragraph in my classroom. It may take me two, three edits. And inevitably, an author, an illustrator comes in and say, well, would you believe that I wrote this book seven times before we published it? Seven, mm -hmm. and there's 200 pages in this book. I know. Well, and I love it when they ask the author or the illustrator, like, what your favorite book is, because they always say the same thing. They're always like, that'd be like asking, you know, like my favorite child or something. And so I think that's really fun, you know, as well. And those personal questions that they ask, like, do you have kids? Do you have pets? Can I see around your house? Like all of those things just it means the world to our kids, but it honestly means the world to like us as as educators and just our families too. I love that. It most definitely it gives that real piece to it, right? Oh, and yeah. our students are going to get to know careers, talking to authors, illustrators, comic book designers, people who lay out books, publishers. There is a world of career connections through all of this, and it just makes it magical. So I'm going to pop on to the next one and we're going to hand it over to you, Shannon, a little while and we're going to have you tell a few of your favorite experiences that you've had with students and global learning, especially hopefully you'll share with us some ways that classrooms to classrooms can make some connections and maybe we'll can pull some interest from the audience as well. So I'm going to hand it over to you. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And so if you have a picture too, you want to share, that's great. If not, let's just talk okay that sounds great well i think i think that the big thing that we have used you know just making those really great global connections has been the way that we have you know really opened up just and taken down the walls between like our little town in van meter iowa to the world and given our kids these experiences and when i first started teaching and i'm also a mother and my oldest one is 26 now and so she and my other kids have experienced these things as well but being able to take them to places you know outside of our small rural town places where they can connect not only to other experiences if it's a museum or maybe it's a zoo somewhere or another place in a you know another country that they're seeing something outside maybe a memorial or something that's really special but i think that one of the biggest things are the connections that we have made with other kids and other classrooms and different cultures and for us being able to think about the way that we have changed the way that we have taught when we sit down and we plan our teaching and we collaborate like we think always about that's always one of my first questions is you know like oh who could we skype in who could we find that we could make a connection to what place could we bring in and then you know i'll say like oh i've met this person at a conference or i've met this person they're part of you know the skype master teacher and we could connect and we could make those connections and just that learning even deeper, I think is something that has been just so very special for our kids. And if it's from, you know, making connections like hundreds of connections during dot day over the year, if it's during like global read aloud or world live read aloud day, like all of these special events. But I always say like when I, because I also speak around the country and also around the world. And when I talk to other people about Skype in the classroom, I always try to say like, don't make it something that you think is just so outside of your normal, like make it part of your ordinary day. Like when we Skype in our classrooms at Van Meter, 
it's something that our kids are really used to. You know, it doesn't matter if there are little bitty ones at five or if they're older, our older ones. It's just part of how we do our day. And so think of, you know, making these connections as just a natural part of how you run a lesson or a project or, you know, a special event. And it's great having these special events, you know, that we all celebrate, but it's those little things too, those little connections that we can make that are just so natural and important as well that we can really, really hook you know, our kids too. And so we have went, I don't even know how many Skypes we have done, probably, I mean, hundreds and hundreds of them. And on a normal week, we probably have, I bet we have over a dozen connections if it's with authors or classrooms or experts, or we went to the zoo a lot, you know, last year, like anything that we can think of and just really enrich and deepen that learning that is happening is something that that we try to do every day. I love that. And we're we're very much the same. There's not a day that goes by in the district that there aren't five to six Skype calls happening. And we're a district of only 5,000 students. So it's it's a little bitty district in the fact that they can connect with the world. It just makes my heart shine. Let's I mean, talk for just a quick moment. Let's talk about some ideas for teachers to connect with other classrooms around literature. So what comes to mind at the beginning for you? Well, I think the first thing is is connecting with authors. If you have a book study going on and you want to pull in that author, the majority of authors that I have connected with are always up for those kind of connections with kids. I have hardly ever been told no by an author or an illustrator that they want to connect. <coughs> That's absolutely true. And it, and what's wonderful is here at Skype in the Classroom, we've got dozens of authors who already are signed up. It doesn't cost anything. And I don't know about you, Shannon, but free is in my price range. And we can have <laughs> tremendous opportunities to talk to authors. And many of them are new and upcoming authors who want to hear feedback from students and such. So it's a perfect fit for all of that. What about if we were to set up a book exchange conversation. Tell me about how you use Mystery Skype or Mystery Location to do that. Well, we've used a lot of Mystery um, Skypes and we do a lot of that, um, not only tying it to literature, like if it is maybe sharing like their most favorite book or maybe it is sharing something like, again, around like a cultural theme or history like anything that you can think of that you can tie in. And then it's a great way to meet, to have the kids meet a different class too. And so giving book reviews, giving like a summary, discussing a book. We've even done it before where we had a class once that we even read a book together. And so it was a chapter book and it was around Global Read Aloud. And we read the book every day with my friend in New Hampshire. And then at the end, then we had a celebration, but it was so special because these were our fourth graders and they look forward to making those connections. But what that did was it opened then the door for making connections to them throughout the year. And so we planned special projects. We planned, you know, we had things that it wasn't just technology it was also you know written letters that we sent back and forth but it really was part of their class and we did that one of our very first connections that we had was with a class in um, Australia and we had to plan it where our kids stayed after school and I think it was like five o'clock and so we had like snacks for our kids. And then my friend's kids were like, they had to come to school early, like at seven. And so they had like donuts and juice, but we had parents come, they had parents come. It was so neat. But what we did was we were planning and they were learning together through books that they were sharing and through things that we would set up for our kids to take part in. But that was one of the neatest things. And it all those stem from just making that connection first with around books, around celebrating with literacy. And 
you know, when you started sharing this idea with me, an idea kind of popped in to my mind is the fact that, of course, authors are not in just one country, they're in every country. And it would just be fantastic to know about what is the most popular book that's being read in your community compared to mine. And we have folks in the audience here today from Egypt, we have folks from India uh, and from Europe as well. And if we just had just the, the basic game of mystery location and guessed where what each another one was located, then say, oh, and, you know, I don't know what you're reading today, but, you know, I'm reading Harry Potter. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and even to see the covers of the books in different parts of the world with the different languages and illustrations that would be on the cover. I think that would be a fantastic opportunity to say, oh, I wonder if that comes in my language. That's another book that we should read. Or, you know, we can do a screen share. I was just sharing my presentation a moment ago. What if our students were to illustrate our own stories inspired kind of like a fan fiction sort of thing from a novel and then had the other class read back yeah. and forth one another. You could even do poems in two voices. I know you're a fan of poem in your pocket day. Have you used Skype for that? Oh yeah, we've done a lot of things around poem in your pocket. And one thing that we have done, and we've done this for several years, is we invite lots of special guests. And then we have it be something that we even have recorded and shared. And so we invite poets, we invite authors, we've invited like even people that have been performers. And then we have different classrooms just sharing their poem in your pocket and not only sharing them, you know, using the great thing about using Skype too is that you could share like a link to like a Padlet where they could share then their poems or maybe they're working collaboratively in a Padlet or something that they can see then, you know, what they're sharing or what they're saying or maybe something that they've even created. And I think that's something that is so special. One of our projects last year that we did for Poem in Your Pocket are the kids created buncees and then they all shared them on a collaborative buncee board. And so not only were we Skyping, but at the same time, the kids were then sharing all of their buncees on a collaborative buncee board that then at the end they could see their poem in your pocket. And so by adding like their video and just their voice to it, you know, really made that experience. And so again, like, you know, thinking about it as how is Skype in your classroom like, you know, just an extension to make things just a whole lot like stickier and better for your kids. And I think those, you know, poem in your pocket is a great, a great thing to do, a great way to do that. Especially, and that's an event that happens in April, but yes. seasons are wonderful opportunities for students to do writing. And even if we had them look at several authors or several poets and the style in which they write, as Shel Silverstein and then do a Jack Perletsky, and we take a look at three or four of these and say, students, you know, um, one of the greatest things about writing is that you can take all of these ideas and play with words and see if you can't provide some imagery to someone else. Even if we were to have them do something around the fall, which is coming up here in the States, yet our friends in Australia, our friends in South Africa, in Argentina, the, the spring is coming. How incredible would it be if we set up a collaboration in Skype in the classroom, which I'll actually show here in a moment, and then we had a seasoned poem exchange. Yeah. The Buncey board would be an excellent piece to add to that as well. Oh yeah, and we've had things too where we have even Skyped like with different grade levels. So one time we had a, for Pullman Your Pocket, we had some seniors in one of my friend's school 
and they were with our fifth graders who were getting ready to graduate from elementary and they wrote a collaborative poem back and forth that had to do with graduation and so you know using something where they're just giving you know feedback and and meeting and i think that cross you know not only having it be in a different place but also mixing up even like the um, age and grade levels of kids is just so powerful too and something that we can we can do as well Agreed, agreed. And you mentioned a little while ago that you have been a part of the Global Read Aloud and activities around that. Have you heard the good news? Skype in the Classroom is going to run live <laughs> events with several of the authors from the Global Read Aloud this year. So excited about that. <laughs> it's, it's going to be fantastic, especially in the fact that many of our authors are coming from diverse backgrounds and cultures. It's going to be terrific. To yeah, start the conversation. That will be so special to our kids. So I'm super excited and thankful for that. I can't wait to share that with my kids and my teachers. Oh, yeah. Oh, Julie is asking, what's a buncy board, Shannon? Oh, so a buncy board is, buncy is a digital storytelling tool. And a Buncy board is where you can share links to different Buncy's. And the cool thing about it is it doesn't have to be just in like your school. It can be something that you share and then people add add to it as well. If you've used Padlet, it's kind of like that because you're sharing like a link where then everything is curated. And a Buncy board is really awesome because it can be like across, you know, grade levels within your school or with schools like all around the world. So it makes it really special to be able to it, share that way. And it's just a beautiful desktop publishing tool for children in the web that they can use it with any device. All right, so Shannon, I think we should take folks on a tour where if they were dreaming up a way to connect with other classes that they know how to get started. Does that sound like a plan? Sounds good, sounds great. All right, I'm gonna share the right screen. If you're like me, you wonder how many screens and windows yeah. do we have open any days? <laughs> and with that, this is the Skype in the Classroom website. Very simple, education.skype.com. And I want to show teachers where they can go get started in many of these things. If you come to the top of the page, there is a section that says find activities and classrooms. It's important to share here that activities are some of the you know virtual field trips that you've experienced where you go to zoos or you get to go, as in last week we went to the Intrepid Space, Airspace and Sea Museum. But that's where you are going to step in there or start in there, and then the classrooms are, you as a teacher create a profile and said, this is my class, these are my students, and we're looking to connect with you. And I'll show you the difference here in just a moment. So here at Skype in the Classroom, we've got options for teachers to explore those virtual filters or if they're looking for resources. We're just gonna uncheck everything except the collaborative projects. These are play opportunities where other teachers have created maybe a global book study, or if they want to do a poem in your pocket day, or it could be that exchange of, I am looking to create some artwork and some writing that's inspired by an author or illustrator. Can your class do the same? Whatever you dream up, that's where this begins. And once you click on those, you can read through those and see what what is expected in all of this? This one's a cultural exchange, which I think would be fantastic to learn to know about North Borneo. And if I was interested in that, all I'd have to do is click join this project. How simple is that? Not too bad. But let's go back a little bit here. And I also want to show you how you can narrow down by age. So I work with middle school students generally. I get to work with everyone, but I come from middle school language arts. I can narrow it down to that age range. And I can also search by language. If I need to have something that is not in English, I can go explore something along those lines. But then let's talk about one other piece that's really important. Let's say you want to set up your own classroom experience. I really hope that's what they do. Shannon, you found if you put your class out there, the world is just kind of holding their hand saying we're ready to connect, right? 
That's right. Well, and I think that, you know, you have to remember that there's lots of other people that can't wait to connect too. And so whatever you have as a class, you know, whatever grade level, whatever your interest is, there's somebody in another part of the world or several people that want to connect as well. Indeed. But there's a couple things we have to remember. You first need to make sure you have a profile that is ready to go. And once you um, register here at Skype in the Classroom, you're going to click on your name up in the corner, and this is where you will put in your information. What's critical to remember is that you need to make sure that you have your email set into this spot along with the checkbox. That allows you to connect with virtual field trip people and they can connect with you as well as connect with these classroom elements. So that one's super important. Make sure you have that one checked. Once that's done, I'll hit save. Here's where you set up the classroom. There's gonna be a spot here that says add a classroom. And when you have that, here's where you can put in the information about your students. And if I am looking at my eighth grade students, what subjects do we cover? Well, we are languages. Let me make sure I get to the right section down here. I know I saw it just a little bit world languages, but reading and writing, that's what we are. We're English language arts. And there was language learning that I'd already checked previously. Here is where I can put in information that my students want to do book exchanges, author talks. We want to um, talk about illustrations, or maybe we'll even do some dramatic play. We could even play some improv games back and forth, I think would be a lot of fun. Don't you think, Shannon? Oh, yeah. And that is, that's one thing that we have a lot of fun with. <laughs> one of my favorites. Have you played the game uh, Fortunately, Unfortunately? No. What is okay, that? Okay, we'll play here. We'll play okay. here in just a moment. Okay. And make sure that you also have a little photo about what it is that you're focusing on. You can add video if you wish your language, how many numbers of students, and then the age range. Once you have that, then there's a spot here for you to set your availability so that other classes know that, hey, I need to make an appointment with you. When are you available? So I'm going to start, because school's not quite in session, I'm gonna jump in to after Labor Day, for Labor Day in the United States. So we'll go in after September 13th. And what I can do is select a day of the week and let's say my class meets from 10 to 10.30 or maybe we go until 11. And then I can choose if that's going to be weekly or if it's just one particular day. So if you're doing a kind of a Skype-a-thon experience where you wanna see several in one day, you can build them all in one day on your calendar and then classes know to connect with you. Pretty simple. And then we hit, hit update. Then let me go back to my educator spot. You also can start collaborative projects. That's where this pops in right here. And if we're gonna do that author talk, that's where, or the book talks, that's where I'm gonna fill that out. And then ask for connections from there. What do you think, Shannon? Pretty easy? It's so easy. It is so easy and it makes it just so much, makes you feel like confident that you're going to make some of those connections. And when we have let the students be the leaders of their curiosity and creativity, we've opened the door to world love of learning. And that's, yes. that's the part of all. If teachers need help, people come up here to resources and go to educators. You are going to find everything you need to get started with this, including how to play Mystery Skype if you've never played that before. And here's the other part that's really important. Not only do we have an element here on getting started with Skype in the classroom, if your students are going to be remote this fall, Skype in the classroom also uses Microsoft Teams. And here's what's great about that. If your students are at home, you can still set up an author call, a collaboration, and no matter where students are, they will get the link. You'll share it out as a teacher to them, or you, if you're using Microsoft Teams, you can add it to your classroom uh, feed over there. And no matter where the kids are, they'll get to join in to that experience. And guess what, Shannon? Parents can join too that way. So we all yeah. get to learn together.
And that is really nice. <laughs> All right, so I think we need to play a quick game. OK, it's called Fortunately Unfortunately, and it's a very easy game to play with Skype or with Teams. Okay. We set up a scenario, so I'm going to do my cat and my cat's name is Buddy. All right, and Buddy is struggling with some sort of a problem. What problem is he struggling with, Shannon? Hmm, is he um, sleepy? <laughs> he is very sleepy. He's uh, he's actually sleeping over here behind me, <laughs> even though you can't see them. He sleeps a lot, and so maybe his problem is that he just can't find a good place to settle down. Okay, so here's the rules of the game. I'm going to start with a sentence that starts with fortunately. I'll start the story. You'll pick up the story, but you will start with unfortunately. OK, and there are two rules. One, nobody can have any violence. It's got to be it's got to be great and fun and playful. And two, nobody dies. <laughs> we all want to just have some fun with that. OK, you know, yeah. some students we have to we have to set that up just a little bit. All right, so here we go. Fortunately, Buddy the cat does have many places to sleep at the smokehouse. Your turn. Unfortunately, Buddy cannot go outside today because it's raining. That's actually true. <laughs> it is here too. <laughs> Fortunately, he has several windows that he can sit in. Oh, unfortunately. Buddy cannot see outside at nighttime. <laughs> Fortunately, there is a perfect pillow that he could sleep on tonight. Oh, unfortunately, I do not have a cat in my house. <laughs> Fortunately, Buddy can Skype your house and be your virtual kitty. <laughs> Yay! I'm not even going to say unfortunately. I'll say fortunately, our dog would love that too. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. But that's how the game is played. That is that's fun. how the game is played. And it's just a great playful improv sort of thing to do with students. That's well, awesome. Shannon, I, I know we're getting a little low on time, but are there any last thoughts that you need to share about connecting your students with the world? Oh, I think, you know, I think the big thing is just, you know, you can make a connection for anything. And that is one thing that through collaboration and through really great Skypes over the years that our teachers, you know, not only me as a librarian, but our teachers have become so confident on knowing that we can find any connection that we can think of and the sky is the limit. And so, you know, don't let like um, time, don't let, you know, even like language or things that you might think of as a roadblock. I think that being able to, you know, work collaboratively with your teachers or your librarian, um, you know, keeping like making sure that you invite your administrators to see these great things happen because the more people that can see this and the more people that you can also like hook, then you can make that just part of what you do within your school. And like it has been at Van Meter, it's something like I said earlier that we do multiple times a week and it's an important part of the learning of our kids and things that they will definitely remember when they think back on on school, regardless of what age they are. Indeed. And, you know, if anything, what I've noticed since COVID has occurred, that teachers are discovering the power of global connections oh, more yeah. than ever. Yeah. And we're, we're seeing so many authors and other just people who love to write and read to connect and say, I, I, am, I just need to connect with someone and tell you about my passion. And if you tell me yours, then we're building connections and empathy with one another. Yeah. It's getting easier all the time. Shannon, thank you for joining us thank today. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. And we have to connect our kids this year. Let's do it. Game on. And yeah. for all of you who are watching with us here today, thank you for your time to join us. It's been fantastic to have you. 
definitely check out education.skype.com to get started with all of these adventures. And if you uh, haven't seen Shannon online for a while, give her a high five and uh, make sure you follow her as well. Thank you. You guys have a great rest of your day. Thanks, everybody.